Hey guys, today I'm going to be sharing with you my fangirl favorites for August 2021. So, I actually have some things that I can talk about this month, you guys. Yay! Uh, I actually went on vacation! <laughs> uh, I'll get to my vacation in the second half of this video. Uh, I'll focus on that. So yeah, this first half of the video, I'll focus on just some nerdy things that I purchased this month. So first up, I got a brand new purse. A, a purse that I didn't even really need, you guys, but I saw this and I couldn't help myself. Uh, this is a Disney purse that I bought at Box Lunch. Um, and it's Robin Hood. Uh, we have Robin and Marion right here. I guess the ending scene when they get married. And this is just such a cute little purse. It's very simplistic. Uh, I'm not really into wild and crazy looking purses. So I, I love the simplicity of this purse. Um, in, yeah, there's kind of like a brickwork sort of design on the sides and there's like some little leaves kind of floating out a little bit and then yeah like right up here I don't know how good you can see that but there's like a heart there that has like uh, their initials for Robin Hood and Maid Marian which is cute um, and then yeah even on the strap I love the strap there's like these little flowers on the strap which is really cute and then yeah there's nothing really on the back at all uh, the artist of this bag is Danielle Nicole and oh my god, you guys, I just realized my, is, my, my purse is already really dirty. Look at that. That's the one thing that I'm not liking about this purse so far. Because see how there's like marks on it already? And I'm not really sure how to properly clean that without, you know, messing up the purse. If anybody is an expert on cleaning purses, please let me know how I can maybe fix this. Because I'm, I'm kind of upset. I've literally only had this purse for a couple weeks, you guys. And it's already kind of getting marks on it. I don't know if it's kind of getting marks from like when I'm standing and because this is this would be leaning up against me against my thigh so I don't know if it's kind of getting marks from like my jeans you know but yeah I'm a little upset about that and then yeah I got my little baby Yoda <laughs> I got my little baby Yoda uh, hand sanitizer attached right here on the back you guys and then as far as the inside I'm trying to like, glance in here I don't think there's anything let me see real quick. I don't think there's anything like wildly crazy and exciting about the inside yet. It's just, it's just a normal inside purse. But yeah, I love this purse, you guys. And yeah, Robin Hood, uh, I, I mean, I love all things Disney anyway, but as far as like classic Disney, and I'm talking about classic Disney, you know, before the 1980s. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think before the 1980s, as far as classic Disney goes, uh, Robin Hood is like my favorite favorite when it comes to Disney classics. So I saw this person, I was like, I must have it because I love Robin Hood so much. But yeah, I thought that was a really cute purse. <laughs> and then moving on to something else. So this is something that my sister actually purchased, but I kind of wanted to share it in this video because I was just really amused with, with it and I loved it. Um, me and my sister, one of our favorite video games that we've played in the past couple years was Detroit to Become Human. Uh, it's, it's, it's one of those video games that's like a kind of choose your own adventure sort of thing where your choices matter, you know, and they affect the gameplay. You're either going to have a good ending or kind of a middling ending or like a really bad ending, just depending on some of your choices. But yeah, we are huge fans of Detroit Become Human. It's a story about it's a story that takes place like in the near future and it's about androids and humanity and stuff like that and what does it mean to be human um, but yeah that's one of our favorite video games that we've played in the last couple years so my sister found this online to purchase and it is the character of Connor who is an he is an android he is our favorite character on that video game and I don't know how God, I don't know how well some of this is showing up but yeah it came with like a little uh, piece of plastic right here like it, one of the very first choices you make very early in the game it doesn't really mean anything it's just kind of the first thing you do you can either save a fish or don't save the fish and you put you know you push circle if you want to save it X if you don't um, so yeah and he's holding my sister put like the little fish in his hand that it came with um, and yeah it's just really cute I just thought it was really cute and simplistic and then I do have some Funko Pops, as I usually do, and I got the whole batch of his Dark Materials. Yeah, guys, I am a huge fan of his Dark Materials. I love the book series by Philip Pullman. I've really been enjoying the TV series that's on 
HBO. Uh, and yeah, they finally came out with some Funko Pops for the, the four. Is it four? Yeah, one, two, three, four. Yeah, I can count. They're the four main characters on that show. Uh, so yeah, let me show that to you guys. Uh, first off, if you don't know what His Dark Materials is about, it's, it's, a, it's a kid's, like science fiction fantasy book series by Philip Pullman and yeah they just recently kind of started up a show it's already in its second season the third season I think is coming out early next year um, and it takes place in like a parallel universe that is kind of similar to our to our own world but kind of different in some ways and like technology is different and one of the big things about his dark materials that you need to know is that in this parallel universe uh, people have these animal companions that are called demons and they're pretty much like extensions of that person's soul if you will if that yeah, I think that's kind of the most simplest way to kind of word it and this this animal companion like I mentioned it's like this it is extension of your soul your personality your your pretty much your being your essence and whatnot it's kind of this this external thing that it, it exists outside of the person's body and like for instance, um, uh, the main girl in the show, she's she hasn't reached puberty yet, so she has a demon that is constantly fluctuating in animal form and whatnot. But like by the time you hit puberty, your your demon it stabilizes into one creature that, and it's going to be that way your entire life and whatnot. Um, does that make sense? I feel like for some people, if if, if nobody knows anything about his dark materials, uh, I think a lot of the concepts in the show and in the books. A lot of it's pretty bizarre and pretty crazy and kind of hard to understand sometimes, but that's kind of it. As, a, as simplified as I can get it. But yeah, Funko has some Funko Pops. Let's get to that. Uh, first up, the main little girl on the show, Lyra and her demon, Pan. This is so cute. I love it. And then we have Lynn manuel Miranda's character right here, uh, Lee Scoresby and his demon, Hester. I love that the Funkos came with like these little small Funkos, <laughs> since like I said, they, they have animal companions with them. So that's really cute. I love his, seriously, this looks just like Lynn manuel Miranda, you guys. And then there's James McAvoy's character, Lord Azrael, and his demon, St uh, Stelmaria, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. I think it's pronounced Stelmaria. Yeah, that looks just like him as well. Does he have a backpack? I didn't know he had a backpack back here, you guys. I didn't realize he had this backpack back here. I'm just discovering something new. And then the last one, Ruth Wilson's character, Mrs. Coulter and her demon, the Golden Monkey. It's only ever referred to as the Golden Monkey. Um, yeah, this is great. This, once again, this looks just like Ruth Wilson. Th seriously, these... His Dark Materials Pops, the Funko did an amazing job because it looks just like the actors and I love just the, the attention to detail, just the little things that to kind of really make them look like the actors and whatnot. Okay, so that is it for all of my nerdy things that I purchased this month. Like I said, I did go on vacation this month. I actually had something, I guess, exciting to do. Uh, so this month, the big thing that I did, um, I went to Ohio. <laughs> I went to Ohio to go see my grandmother and I went with my mom and my sister. Uh, my dad stayed at home with the, the cats. And let me tell you about my poor cats, you guys. My dad kept sending, sending pictures of our cats and those poor cats are the most depressed looking things I've ever seen. Our cats are so wildly spoiled that whenever we sit and go on vacation, our cats seriously go into like a deep dark depression when we're away. <laughs> And like in turn, I, I feel like I get some sort of secondhand depression. <laughs> I, I feel like I need to show you my depressed cat because it's it's so sad and so pitiful. Uh, my other cat did did fine, but yeah, my one cat Maggie, she was so depressed. It's not even funny. Uh, but yeah, my poor cats were so depressed while we were away because we were gone for about like a week and two days, I think. Um, so yeah, we went to Ohio to go see my grandmother. And on the way, first up, before we even got to my grandmother, since we were kind of heading up that way, uh, we did make a stop uh, in Kentucky at this attraction called the Ark Encounter. <laughs> um, it, it, if you don't know what the Ark Encounter is, it's basically a big, how would you describe it? It's, it, it's essentially like a museum that is all about like Noah's Ark. <laughs> um, and let me let me put this out there. I 
I am not a religious person, okay? I'm not a religious person. Uh, I have taken uh, like Bible classes in college, you know, to just kind of get myself familiar with the Bible and what it's about and what it means, you know? But other than taking some classes about like religion and about Bible and about the Bible, like I said, I did that in college. Other than that, I mean, I'm not a religious person. So I, I wasn't sure what to expect with this this museum, the Ark Encounter. I wasn't quite sure what to expect or how I was going to feel about it, you know, since I'm not religious. Um, but I, I had a great time at this museum, you yeah, guys. Uh, it was actually very, um, it, it was, it was entertaining and very educational. That's kind of the big thing. It was very educational. And the big thing about this museum, the Ark Encounter, the big thing is, um, there's a lot of, like, research done um about okay what if there really was a, an ark you know during the biblical times and noah and his family really made the ark okay the hypothetical what if they really did make this thing how did they make it uh, what were what was the size of it what did they have in it how did they get all of these animals in it you know there's a lot of research and math um, that had to be done to kind of put this whole museum together to make it have some sort of logical sense, you know, to a modern era, you know what I mean? Um, so it, it, this whole museum was, it was very, very, um, educational. Um, even if I personally kind of don't really believe in it and, I, and whatnot, it's like I still appreciated, um, the, the time and energy and the amount of research that went into creating this museum because it did it made me think huh okay maybe this could have really happened you know um but yeah it was it was it was, it was I had a great time at the Ark Encounter you guys I, I I definitely recommend it whether you're religious or you're not religious I think it's just a great museum to go to it's just it's very different from your typical type of museum I feel like um, and just lots of really neat things to look at. I loved, I loved their displays, like how they had the animals, you know, because the whole museum is the size of what the real Ark would have been, if that makes sense. Um, and so everything is laid out like this is how it could have possibly been laid out. This is how they could have transported water. This is how they could have transported waste. This is how they could have transported food. Um, it, there's just a lot of technical things that went into the making of this museum that I really appreciated and I found really highly enjoyable and entertaining at the same time. Um, but it was, it was a great experience. I'm glad, I'm glad we went to this museum because it's something I don't think I would have really gone to on my own to be quite honest. But it was, it was great. Um, and then the other thing we did once we left the Ark Encounter, we finally went to Ohio to see my grandma. The other big thing we did, uh, we, we took our grandma to the Cincinnati Zoo. <laughs> Yay! Uh, I love zoos, you guys. Um, uh, the, the Cincinnati Zoo, I've never been to the Cincinnati Zoo before. It, that was also a really great, fun time. Um, I'm, I, you know, I'm so used to being at zoos because like, because I live in North Carolina and our North Carolina Zoo is very, very large and the animals have huge roaming space and sometimes it's kind of hard to see the animals. Um, so the Cincinnati Zoo, since it's, you know, dead right there in the center of Cincinnati, because you can look up and you can see like the skyline and all the skyscrapers and whatnot uh, around the zoo, um, it is a smaller location and the animals do have kind of smaller enclosures which which I mean that, that definitely sucks for, for the animals because they, they need larger spaces um, but at the same time it's like I we really got some up close encounters with animals that we've never had up close encounters with before like we were literally like right up on some giraffes we were right up on some elephants we were right up on um, some some meerkats I mean we really got to be up close to a lot of these animals you know in a safe way obviously but um, I, I really liked the Cincinnati Zoo. I had a great time there. My my grandma really loved the penguins. I don't know what it was about the penguins. She was really obsessed with the penguins. <laughs> um, uh, what was my favorite animal? I was I was amused with the meerkats. Let me tell you, I was obsessed with the meerkats because they were making me think of my my cats. <laughs> 
Uh, and then, I, I don't know what it was, I think my sister, I think my sister was maybe obsessed with the vultures, because the vultures, they were just, they were funny. There's gonna be some footage in this, in this video with the vultures, and they're just so amusing and hilarious. Um, but, but yeah, the zoo was great, it was a great time. Um, so yeah, this, uh, this video, the rest of this video is just gonna end, um, I'm just gonna have some clips and some photos from both the Ark Encounter and the Cincinnati Zoo. So if you want to watch that segment of the video, feel free to watch it. So yeah, if you stick around, I guess I'll see you at the very end of this video. So roll the footage. <laughs> below. I would love to know what you guys got up to this month. Any nerdy things that you purchased? Any hobbies that you enjoy? Did you happen to go on any vacations? Because I know the summer is winding down and a lot of people usually kind of try squeezing their summer vacations as best they can before September hits. So yeah, any fun vacations that anybody went on just share with me down below. So that's it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you like this video, you may like these other videos. Bye guys.